First question. Can you help us to better understand enlightenment and how it relates to our lives? If we are going to understand the concept of enlightenment, we have to somehow understand what unenlightenment is. And so if unenlightenment corresponds to the idea of suffering, and as you're saying then, how do we get beyond suffering without even using the word enlightenment? Because getting beyond suffering implies the same. Uh, well, I think we have to take a good look at suffering or whatever that might mean to the individual and see, rather than just look, ask what is really necessary to be doing right now. Is it necessary to be suffering if you can perceive that you are suffering in any way, physically, emotionally, causally in terms of memory, mentally in terms of thought processes, and ecologically in terms of self-identification, and relationally and so on, and then maybe etherically in terms of having a you know bad psychological basis or some kind of a problem with your willpower and your drive to do things and so on. River of blood consciousness, you know. How does that play into what we are suffering in terms of programs and tendencies and other kinds of stuff that we may have inherited uh, that uh, may be more biologically the case than psychologically the case, right? physically speaking. So once we are able to embrace the fact that we don't have to suffer, that it is a program, then enlightenment becomes much more uh, probability, more like uh, what's really happening, what is or should be happening, right? Being happy, uh, being of service, being open, being creative. These are part of the, let us say, uh, manifestations of enlightenment. Being uh, joyous, even. Right? Totally open to helping others in a spontaneous, spontaneous manner. So, joyous. And having no problems with creating what needs to be created at the same time. So there's a certain kind of availability relative to enlightenment that uh, is what everyone is working towards and they're not sure of it. But along the way they are identified with this, that, and whatever, or whomever to the degree that they're not being available to their true nature as a fully conscious cosmic entity rather than, you know, as it tends to be the case, you are a social or cultural, you know, stiff. <laughs> You know, egoic, stiff, right? which is to miss the point of being anything at all, really. So, uh, enlightenment then has a paradoxical level once we get to that stage and say, well, what is it? Well, who knows what it is? You get to enlightenment where there's a big question mark. Well, I don't know what it is. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it ultimately is something you can't know. That is to say, maybe it is outside of the mind, outside of the intellect outside of thought processes and as we progress towards whatever emptiness might be in terms of what you understand that to be as a fact of reality or force of light or some kind of truth or some kind of reality or, or basically a paradox uh, then you start to let go of anything that stands in the way if you're progressing as such and I think the key to this is again mentoring so that rather than thinking it's something you can learn it becomes something that you access by way of unlearning or burning. And you see what enlightenment is. Enlightenment is in terms of being scorched by the fire, which is the light of enlightenment. And then, who knows what it is? <laughs> Apart from fire. <laughs>